Welcome to labminutes.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure Cisco ICE to interface with our DAB directory server to access user database for authentication and authorization. If you've watched our Active Directory integration video, you see that the steps we're about to take will be very similar to that. Let's take a look at our lab setup. So in this lab, we have a Cisco ICE running version 1.1.2 with the IP configure of .102. And we also have a domain controller at .40, which we also will be using as an LDAP server. As always, before you start, you want to make sure that you have a DNS server configured properly with the name resolution, as well as having a time properly synchronized between the I server and the rest of the network. So after locking into the I server, you want to go to Administration and External Identity Sources. Just right below Active Directory, you have LDAP option. So go ahead and click on that and go ahead and add the server. First, we have to give it a name. So here we'll just name it LM underscore LDAP. And you, you can also enter a description if you want to. And here you specify the type of server. Here we're dealing with Active Directory. We go ahead and click on the next tab, which is connection. With the primary server, you specify the IP. For us, is 172.16.32.104. We're going to leave the LDAP default port of 389. And we will be doing authenticated access. And here we have to, to type in the user account, which you have previously created on our domain controller. And just to show you, we call it ice underscore AD. And all it is is just a domain users. Okay, so here we type in info with the domain name, lab minutes, backslash ice AD and Cisco. We're going to leave it as an unsecure authentication. Leave all the timeout values and number of connection at default. Go ahead and test bind to the server. Looks like I have a little typo here, so that should be 40. Let's go ahead and test that again. And now we have a successful bind with the number of subjects and number of groups to be zero, and that's because we have not configure a search base as specified right here. Okay. Next we can go ahead and configure our directory organization. And here this is where you specify your subject search base and your group search base. We're just going to keep it generic so we're going to go at the top level of our um, domain hierarchy which is the domain itself. So the search base will be for us is DC equal lab minutes and DC equal com. Okay, just double check the spelling. We'll copy copy that over. We'll leave everything at default whether it's MAC address or whether or not to strip some characters. If you go back to the connections and do a test bind to the server one more time, and you can see the count for the subjects and groups has gone up, and that's because I can basically now access the LDAP. Now that the database is visible to ICE, we can go ahead and add the user groups or desired user groups that you want to use as part of your policies. So here we go add and select groups from directory. Let's leave everything at default, which is uh, wildcard asterisk. Retrieve groups, you can see there's a whole lot of groups that show up, and these are essentially all the groups that's contained under that particular search base that we specified earlier. Okay. If you're dealing with a large number of groups, you might want to leverage the filter. Here, everything seems to start with CN. And it goes backward, unlike um, Active Directory, where you start with your 
top level, then go down to the lower level. Here it goes, it seems like it goes backwards. So CN, we're just going to do CN equal domain because we're looking for a domain computers and domain users, user group. Go ahead and retrieve groups. Now we're left with five groups, so just go ahead and select the one that you need. So it will be domain computers for us and domain users. Click OK. And now we have the group added. If you desire to use additional LDAP attributes, then you can go ahead and do that also. Right here. Just perform the pretty much similar search or type of search and add that particular attribute. Okay, so now we are done with the configuration of LDAPs. Go ahead and submit. Okay, the next step or next thing we would like to do is create a identity source sequence. So if you're desired to use multiple identity source as part of your uh, authentication, you see right here we had the AD local and local AD added earlier. So now we're going to use the LDAP. So let's say you want to start searching your user from your LDAP, uh, in your LDAP database before you fall back to the local database, then what you need to do is go ahead and add. Let's call this one LDAP, uh, LM underscore LDAP underscore local. So LDAP search will be performed first before I will fall back to local. So we'll add that in order of preference. So LM LDAP and then internal user. So go ahead and submit. But if you also want to do that the other way around, which is local before LDAP, this depends on how you want to control your authentication. Then you would want to do local and then LDAP. Just configure the name corresponding to what we're configuring. And then submit. And then from there, we are pretty much ready to start using those source sequence as part of your authentication policies. So just to show you real quick, here, this is where you specify what database or user database you would like to use for your, uh, to look up your user. So now if you, if you see here, these are all the identity source that we have configured both uh, individually or as part of the sequence that we configured. So for example, right here is LM LDAP local. Okay. And now to utilize the LDAP user groups that we have added earlier, that will be part of your authorization policies. Let's go ahead and quickly add a new one. So insert rule above, and that would be as part of your condition. And right here, LM LDAP will be under external group. You can do equal, not equal, start with anything you desire. And here, if you drop down your uh, options, there these are the groups that we added earlier. So domain computers and domain users. Okay, so that should wraps up our video on LDAP integration and identity source sequence on Cisco Ice. Thank you for watching labminutes.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.